you know, discouraging, um, depressing. Um, I know when we came back, and I've still got two or three of my staff from the past, and when we came back here and, and you just look at this facility of, and remember the way it was, and then see the way it is now, and you're just, you know, where do you even start? You, you find out how poorly you can treat something and still bring it back, right? Um, like this place has been beat up and it, I, I was telling you earlier that we, we cut this whole property with a ride mower That's how, how we got it down. So it was, you know, a three foot deck on the front of a ride mower and that's how we maintained the golf course for a year. I've been lucky enough to be here uh, through all three ownerships where um, we were at the highest point of where we we could be at the time and then um, unlucky enough to go through the lull in between where we went uh, down to basically four people maintaining a, a world-class golf course to no people maintaining the golf course. the biggest things that our ownership and our management has done going into this was going back and talking to Mr. Whitman and Mr. Zoko and, and Armin and, and, and getting that kind of feedback on what it was supposed to be. Um, I was here when we were in those conditions so certainly we're going to try to maintain the same kind of conditions where it's, it's hard and fast and uh, greens are, are not necessarily receptive to to ball marks and stuff like that. When Band and Dunes came out and I saw it, I went, okay, this is a game changer. This is really authentic ground games, Lynx golf, real Lynx golf, not faux Lynx golf. And I said, you know what, the perfect model is to create the club of Redtail, that, like the, the clubhouse and the atmosphere of it, with a Band and Dunes type of a golf course. The routing at Sagebrush is masterclass. You know, when Dick, Dick Zokel started that project, um, they had a few architects out there, and a lot of them went, you gotta be joking, this is the site? This is the side of a mountain. We can't build anything here. You know, the one thing that really honestly uh, strikes me about Rod is how good he is at routing the golf courses. Sagebrush, honestly, it has no business being as good as it is. That site is so difficult. Like, the, there's so much pitch and so much slope. I, I don't know whether Wyth said it or I said it. Are we going to ski on this or, or play golf? You know, Urbina had done a routing. Wyth had done a routing. There were golf holes out there. Uh, the challenge was just trying to find those holes, the connector holes. I think we constructed one hole out there. 
The rest of it was pretty much on the ground. Which was that one hole? Uh, eight. Okay. Eight was a bigger fill and it just had to get us through to the next. Right. Um, but seven was pretty much there, nine was there, you know, those low, and all the, all the higher holes. Doke and I, day one, flagged out fairways that were like 70 yards wide, 80 yards wide, uh, on which route? You know, Dick was part ownership. Yep. He saw the talent in Rod and trusted in his ability to form a team around him to just get creative with that site. And that's what we did. We had some really talented people out there. And I just, you know, I started at the bottom. I got to learn from all of them. And I think it shaped who I am. It made me a much better creative person. And Minge was there, Jeff was there. Jeff spent more time there than anybody, by the way, other than maybe Zoe. I first heard about the idea of doing Sagebrush back when we were building Blackhawk in Edmonton. Rod had been out there a few times working on the routing and he told me how nice the site was. I drove out from Windsor and I do remember pulling up on the site and just thinking to myself, I, I was flabbergasted. We had an opportunity to do something really, really spectacular. You know, and Dick always had high level expectations for the place too, which made it even more exciting. You knew it wasn't just gonna be, you know, another golf course. You gotta tone it down, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> How can I tone it down? We're at Siege, bro! Let's go! Siege, let's go! <laughs> I can see this tape like 10 times coming up with new accents. Like, <laughs> he's just a different person. Howdy boys. That green looks massive with the pin in. That pin was not in an yeah. hour ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look how big that green looks. Curious to see how it's going to fit into my personal like taste. overall. Yeah, taste, but also my overall list of like all the courses I've ever played. You know, like we heard from Keith, the scale can't be mimicked anywhere else in Canada other than Cabot Links and overseas to the UK to the next thing that can rival it or even or Bandon or something. So if we're talking about Bandon, Cabot and Scotland, like I think it's gonna be pretty good. So this this perseverance is not just of the land, it's of the people and it's a testament to you too. Well, I appreciate that. 100%. Um, what would you have told yourself that you know now about perseverance back in 2012 when you started? Here? Well, um, certainly you don't see this coming. Yeah. Um, but back to everything, you, you just fall in love with this property, right? People come back for a reason. And it's not because of whoever's pulling the strings or anything. It's, it's this property. And, uh, you know, I've got one guy working for me that was 17 years old when he started here and he was picking rocks when they're building fairways and he's still here. So, so those are the kind of people that love to be around here, yeah. um, myself included and, and these two guys as well. Um, so you just love to be at this place. Cheers, dude. What a treat. Okay, so Pat, you're getting three shots. All right, baby. How many? Three. Well, it's all relative. We'll get like seven. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have the scorecard on you? Like the three hardest holes? Um, I have it. He has it. It's, it's not split by nines the way it usually is. Cool. It's all like, all bounced about. Let's do it. Sex age, brush. we were trying to build with you know and that goes to the one acre bunker on the first hole I knew we were building something pretty substantial um, when we got there and I'm, I'm asking like why does this thing need to be so big and I remember Rod like day one going if it's not big it's gonna look pretty small next to these mountains yeah I kind of chuckle when I hear people suggest that perhaps the first hole um, might not be the best hole you know um, but it was the key to getting that routing to work. You know, somehow or another, you had to get up that big hill.
Get in. No way. Oh. oh. I think sec the second hole is the is the is the most natural hole there is. You you hit it between a funnel and then it goes down. It just looks and then with the lake on the background, it looks as though like you're in the middle of Ireland. Um, if you didn't have sagebrush there, but it's uh, the way the land sweeps. It was just um, it's obvious that the, it's in that most the most natural hole in the property. It'd be really good. You're probably on that line. You were like 250 to carry. I think you're. I think you're really good right there. The whole fairway, if you hit into the right areas, feeds onto that green. And it's not, it's not heavily bunkered. There's bunkers there to set up the angle when you come over the hill. Um, but really everything else is dictated by the ground. This hole is so good. Have you guys seen the left bunker yet? No, I can't even see it. Right yeah. Hop in. Nice. I guess your only concern, I don't know what the yardage is to go through the fairway on the right. 316, so maybe downwind if it's firm. That's a concern, but your ball's bouncing left. A structural bunker, if you're trying to level something up, number three at Sagebrush is a great example, that big left bunker, that's a structural bunker. Yeah. In order to support that, that landing area there, that bit of somewhat level turf, um, you would have had to go out another 40 yards of fill. But cr creating a huge bunker in there saved a lot of dirt. Interesting. And it also tells a story, bunker here, big bunker here, the play is on the hill and slide down. Get down that hill, go in, do it. Ah. Some things that I saw Rod do there, like the horizon green, yeah. that's right on the water. Um, fours like that, there's, there's several that play out to Nicola Lake. Yeah. Um, th there's actually quite a few out there that have that. Um, and we, we did that again at Cabot. Yeah. And it was something that the way that green sits there with the horizon as the background, water behind it, um, it really, it just, it, 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 it oozes authenticity. It oozes um, sort of, it, it, it puts a, a spotlight on that green versus having more grass in behind it. Day one, just checking out the property with the boys and it is unbelievable. Take a look at the scale. Crazy. Right now we're on the par four fifth hole 
excited to see the rest. Number five approach shot. You can cut the ball or hybrid the ball, you know, almost dead left and wait and watch it roll onto the green. Okay. Or you can or you can pop it up a little bit halfway between that and a direct route and watch the same thing happen. Or you can try to fly it. Um, all those things are, are there. should be down, so there's a magnet down here on this front left. Yeah. from 246. Yeah. What a dart. For than his last drive. This hole is 258 par three from the back. Insane. So we're sitting up on top of this second shot area if you've laid up for, for seven and um, it's a par five that comes up a hill and swoops back down. And I look down at this green, this huge map, uh, hummock next to it. And I said, that whole thing should be the green. We always knew they were gonna be big just because the scale of the site was so large that you weren't gonna put 5,000 square foot greens like you see on you know, a typical Canadian golf course on that site. So, you know, they started to get pretty big. And then every time Dick and Armin came out to have a look at what we were building, they got bigger. Now they pulled me back from the edge of the cliff. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a maniac. We ended up with green that was a half acre there because they kept me from running it down even further, which they were right. You know, I was insane. For me, it's the, the, the green complexes out there are what sort of make it stand apart, like the scale of them. Um, nine is really, really special. Big boomerang green with the bunker in front that literally you can be back left or front right, and there's a big old contour in there that you can swing a ball around. Yeah. Um, that was neat seeing that thing evolve. I was still kind of a neophyte coming into the business, so any chance I had to really take the reins, I'll be honest, I was always trying to impress Rod. And uh, it was, it's never that easy to do that. Um, so here's my, here's one of my chances, right? So I take a bulldozer up there and I start shaping. This boomerang started to, to develop. I thought, well, this is kind of funky and unique. And so I just leave it there for a bit. Dick loves it. Rod's not too keen on it. Then they uh, got into whatever conversation it may have been. And uh, the boomerang stayed. I banged that boomerang concept in there, but Rod kind of cleaned up my mess. So to speak. <laughs> when the greens are playing really quickly, um, 
we always used to like to say we've got seven acres of uh, maintained bent grass and uh, you don't want to hit any of it. You want to bump and roll up into it. You know, first of all, again, the contouring is brilliant and 90% of that contouring is Rod personally on the bulldozer doing that work. Um, just honestly, beautiful contouring. It was a perfect prelude to Cabot actually because Cabot's got some great contouring too. One I am guilty of forgetting about in, in doing my first kind of drive arounds was number 10. You know, kind of par three off in the corner. And I, I just hadn't remembered what that hole was. And then you get down there on the green itself and you're convinced there's no golf course anywhere around you. There is a, there's a green down there, you can't see tee box, you can't see the next hole, you can't see anything else. It feels like there's just one little private putting green just kind of created down in this spot. You still get beautiful views kind of down the lake. From a routing standpoint, but one of the holes, one of my favorite holes now, which I didn't get, which routing on it, I, you know, I'm like, wait, I don't get it, and it worked number eleven, just a great hole, I mean, really good, and and I didn't, I didn't see it at first. You can hit your tee shot and choose to stay up, and then it drops down in a valley and comes up to the green, so you can hit it longer and have an uphill approach shot. Or you can stay up high and have a level approach shot into the green. And depending on where the pin is, that might help make your decision for you. Um, really interesting. It, it worked out great. Um, and we built another pretty big green there. You put me on a spot to choose a favorite hole. Uh, just above us is hole 12. It's uh, about 100 and from the back tees, about 120 yards from the furthest tees, but most people play it about 100 yards. One of the coolest um, settings for a short par three because you look over your right shoulder and you have that view behind you. Uh, it's right up against that cliff that's, um, that's, and that cliff is sort of seen at many different stages in the golf course and it looks like it's a miles away, but eventually you're right below it playing this picturesque classic par three and, and it's for a hundred yard hole it's probably could be a three club green it's, it's got three different distinct tiers to it and just so it's picturesque yeah, yeah. yeah and a false front and it's got a bunker short left that all they would need to do if you're in there just lay down we'll throw a couple uh, buckets of sand over you and then that's <laughs> you know it's just it's just a it's just a tight little bunker so it's just so unique for birdie, the par 3 12th. Oh, that's a good one. Not a bad attempt. That's like the same tap in I had, so that's good, I think. Looks good to me. Yes. Nice birdie. Twelve and thirteen are a little different than the rest of the property. Sure. Um, they're a little bit more secu secluded. Um, we talk all the time in golf architecture about uh, compression and release in a routing. Like you don't want everything wide. Like if everything's 150 yards wide, you know that's excessive. But if everything's 70, 80, 90 yards wide, it, it doesn't feel big after a while. You play the first or second hole, and you're like, this is big, and then it kind of loses that because you know it's just too much of a good thing so when you get back into a corner like that and it you get that compression a little bit and then it releases again you you get the contrast all right so we're standing at 13 at sagebrush just saw a fish jump eh? Yeah. should have brought the fishing rod 
306 par four. Nice little run up on the left, but you gotta bring that OB into the equation if you wanna get it up there. Otherwise you might leave yourself a nasty little chip over those bunkers. Course rating though, 76 today, so I'm getting three shots. And I'm lighting it up. And Mike isn't. He might have tossed me a club. I got one. Fourteenth green at Sagebrush. That bunker on the left, we designed to be putted out of. You ever heard such a thing? Something that's pretty cool uh, about having a, a player involved in the project, obviously. Yeah. And so you're talking a little bit about 13. Are there any other examples where Dick was out there playing around? And yeah, there was quite. There was a few examples where he widened fairways in certain locations uh, to have a different angle into the uh, to the greens. Yeah. Like he was great with that. You know I'm, holes? 15 or 16. He widened the right side coming in. I believe it's 16. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like the, first, the the tee shot, he widened that really far yeah. right before you go down the hill. Um, and there was an overall emphasis on scale, like everything we built, you know, I remember him, you know, bigger, bigger. location that's a real tricky one to get real close if you're gonna go for the green into but uh, it's one of the biggest greens uh, out here um, from where that flag is to where it is at the back if you were flying the shot in there it could be a four club green uh, but it's a really neat fi feature from I remember even in the early days when it's in, and we will get back to running you know firm and fast again if you hit one out to the you know right center or right side of that hill out there uh, you, you'll lose sight of your ball uh, but if you wait for it, six, eight, ten seconds later, it's going to run out and you'll see it end up somewhere in that middle of the green. And uh, so many different ways you can play it. Some, some players might want to not have the run down option. They might, the stronger hitters might just want to carry it all the way there, especially a flag like that one might be a better carry shot.
probably good to see. Oh. Sagebrush is just the, the, the gem on the West Coast. It's a type of golf that you're not going to experience anywhere else. Nobody else has built this. The steepness of it in spots allows for certain golf shots that you won't experience anywhere else. Yeah. The, the slopes out there allow the ball to run. And what that does is it, it gives more of a Scottish vibe. Um, the origins of golf played along the ground um, using the ground to dictate uh, and result in shots that you wouldn't be able to hit anywhere, any, any other way. Um, and it, 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 it actually broadens um, the interest for golfers. What people don't understand is like, golf architecture is about allowing the beginner to play, but challenging the best player. And Contour does that. That's, that's the essence of golf architecture. Neil sort of came in and was the one-man crew on site for years, keeping that place, you know, keeping the doors open, essentially mowing the grass, keeping the, the everything watered, so it didn't deteriorate to a point where it was unsavable. Right. Um, you know, I, I don't think we can give a big enough thanks to him yeah. um, for keeping Sagebrush at the point where it could be rescued once better ownership came in. You you, you end up taking a lot of you know, punches and, and stuff like that to get through it. But, you know, we all talk about it. It's going to be a great story one day. Yeah, he was awesome. Recording. Oh, he was. Neil I was wish awesome. I could spend a day with him. Yeah, you're good to go at a normal place. Yeah, what a story, eh? Yeah. That guy went through a serious grind to... Uh, you gotta even get this place back yeah, to where it was. He's today. gotta be pretty tough, like mentally, to even keep working at it. And it's okay, we got the we got the drone. We got it with the drone. So many good holes out there. I can't even pick three. Good? No. I think two and eleven, and sixteen. Or should I not be? It's so all really the really like all the par threes. Yeah. Yeah. All the par threes. Are Ten. So good. Okay, 10 and 12, I'm just shove like the camera outside fun, the short par threes. What a treat. Yeah, that was one of, the, uh, one of the best golf yeah. experiences in my life. I've, same. Yeah. It, it, for, for a very long time. <laughs> Man, I, like, at what course do you just go up to the cliff and just chill with mother nature and wind and for like two hours on 14t yeah. today or waking up at 5 30 yeah. and spending the entire the day on the course and not still not wanting to leave yeah. at, the, at the end of the day yeah special place if you have 10 rounds to split for the rest of your life uh, between the old course and sagebrush how do you split those rounds up well, be, I would say I'd go, I'd go 50, 50, I'd go five and five, uh, cool. you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, the old course that it will always be very special because of, uh, what's transpired there over the centuries, hard to say that, mm -hmm. and, and, and Sagebrush because it, it is my child and, and, uh, you know, and, and, and what Rod did there, what Armin did there, um, we had some challenges as a team. But what we accomplished, everyone was so very excited and everyone felt that the, 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 the sum of all uh, made for such a great result.